So the Justice Department, the DOJ redactions are now due, literally this hour, right now, uh, by Judge Bruce Reinhardt in West Palm Beach, Florida. Now we're waiting for the decision about how much of the Mar-a-Lago affidavit will be unsealed or if it will be released at all. There are no other pending deadlines, so the judge's next move may be quick, or it could take several days or even weeks as this thing drags on and on. Reinhardt, in a formal order this week, said that he may ultimately side with the government, which argues that the redactions will make the disclosure meaningless. So, with more on this, let's welcome in former U.S. Attorney Brett Tolman. He's also the executive director of Right on Crime. Brett, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, look, a lot of questions. Uh, the Justice Department was given, like I said, until noon today to submit its redactions to the affidavit. Uh, they'll also submit why those redactions are necessary. What could be potentially released today, if anything at all? I mean, look, expectations aren't exactly high, are they? No, I'm not very optimistic um, that we're gonna get a lot of answers today. I think that the Department of Justice very accustomed to not um, being told what to do, even even by judges. And so I think they're going to redact quite a bit of it, and the judge is going to be left to decide whether uh, it's enough to, to even release the affidavit to begin with. I'm doubtful. Yeah, I mean, in my experience as a, as a journalist, when I've done FOIAs, Freedom of Information Acts, for, for affidavits, depending on the, the releasing agency, depending on the investigation, sometimes I'll get an affidavit that you know, has some meat, some substance to it. Other times I'll get an affidavit where, I mean, it's just one black line after another. Uh, and, and that's understandable sometimes to protect the integrity of the investigation. Um, but in this case, the judge has given the DOJ the ability to basically appeal any decision. So correct me if I'm wrong, the judge could say, look, uh, I agree that, you know, items one through nine should be redacted, but item 10, I think, should be released. But then the DOJ can say, no, we think item 10 should be redacted as well. Is that, is that correct? Am I outlining that accurately? Yeah, the reality is that's what the OJ is going to do. They are, oh. if Judge Reinhardt comes back with, um, you know, something broader than what the OJ has recommended, they will appeal it to the district court and hope that they get a favorable ruling. It's all going to depend, John, on whether they can truly justify in, in this case that they, you know, in a document that will ultimately, if, if you were to go to trial, would be released in its, its complete form, and the public would absolutely know um, whether or not it's so urgent and necessary that uh, they can't release anything right now. And, and that's a tough question for a judge who cares about transparency. I'm hopeful that he'll err on the side of releasing more information, especially in a case like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is something that when I when I first heard about the raid, I said, well, what about the affidavit? What about the probable cause? What's the probable cause involved? And, you know, along those lines, I wanted to also ask you about the search warrant that was approved by Judge Reinhardt. Uh, the constitutional law attorneys David Rivkin and Lee Casey wrote in a piece in the Wall Street Journal um, saying that it had no legal basis, um, quoting a former president's right, rights under Presidential Records Act, trumped the statutes the FBI cited to justify the Mar-a-Lago raid. Uh, is this accurate? <laughs> It may be accurate. And on top of that, there is concern that the execution of the search warrant itself reveals that it was much more uh, akin to a general warrant as opposed to a very specific, narrowly tailored warrant that the attorney general claimed that it was. So in both the language used in the warrant, the execution of the warrant, and now with, with some of the underlying um, facts that we're starting to learn that are coming out from the other side, there is concern that not only did they not have justification legally, we do not know what they represented to this judge. So we need to see that in particular to know whether or not that probable cause was justified to begin with. Yeah, and what do you think happens, Brett, in, in next in the legal battle over the classified documents that were taken from Mar-a-Lago? Uh, former President Trump's legal team submitted a 27-page motion asking they re be reviewed essentially by an independent third party. Uh, does he have a good case, or is that just kind of more political show? What do you think? Well, two things. You know, he's asked for a special master. I don't think that's the right uh, motion and the right, re you know, result that they're looking for. 
What they really need is what's referred to in the Department of Justice as a taint team. This is a team of individuals that are not involved in the case at all, both prosecutors and investigators, who can take the evidence, look through it for privilege, executive privilege, and put aside all those documents that, that may be at issue that the government should not be able to review. I mean, that's really what they're asking for. It's shocking that the government, DOJ, hasn't come forward and, and already indicated that that team is in place and reviewing the documents. It tells me they didn't quite think through this, this search warrant, John. Yeah, y yesterday, um, one, one final question here. We got about maybe two minutes left. Uh, President Biden asked if he knew about the F raid, uh, FBI raid in advance, and listen to what he said to that. President, how much advance notice did you have of the FBI's plan to search Mar-a-Lago? I didn't have any advance notice, none, zero, not one single bit. Is it plausible, Brett, that the White House, I know, you're laughing, right? So is it plausible the White House, the executive office of the president, specifically President Biden, was not aware of the raid or even the events leading up to it, that is the fact that a judge signed off on a search warrant based upon the affidavit and probable cause contained therein? You know, John, I don't think President Biden could uh, even hit the um, reasonable standard on whether or not uh, he he had uh, no prior notice or not. The White House is part of the executive branch. They absolutely have liaison between the Department of Justice at the highest levels and the White House. There is zero chance this president was not aware that there were uh, that the OJ was on a path to execute a search warrant in this case against the former president. Well, a lot, a lot to, uh, to sift through uh, again. And we, as we anxiously, with bated breath, wait for that affidavit, <laughs> if it indeed comes out and what it could contain, if it has any meat or substance, we'll see, right? Stay tuned for that. Uh, yep. Brett Tolman, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, John.